took it all from me there. Not, not, not I'm talking about the time. I'm like, basically preached my message this morning. It's kind of funny. Not really funny. It was, it's, isn't it amazing? <laughs> Focus, people. Come on. <clears throat> but no, it, isn't it amazing that there's no coincidences with God? He knows what's happening. He knows what's going on in our lives. And, and though the wasn't, pastor wasn't talking in the same area um, that, I was, that I'm in, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John chapter number 11. We'll stand in just a moment, but pastor wasn't talking about that, but it, it, it's, it's, it runs right along the same lines. And, and the, the song that Sarah sang, and the songs that we sang today already, it, it all just comes together. None of that was orchestrated. That was, we did, there's a lot of that. None of that happens. That was God. If you just find that amazing, just in awe of who He is. If you have, you find your spot in John chapter 11, and if you're able, if you'll stand with me, I'm just going to read a few verses, and I'm going to jump right in this morning. In John chapter 11, we're going to start reading verse number 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that he that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I ask you to just uh, help us, Lord, to see uh, what you have for us out of it. Lord, I pray that you help me to deliver it in a way that brings you honor and glory. And Lord, I pray that you'll just help me to say what you have me to say, Lord, nothing else. Thank you for everything you've done in your name. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue reading here shortly, but I have... Again, this is just, in preparing for this this morning, or not just this morning, but just in the last week or so, going through this, and what's going on in in multiple members' lives right now, I didn't know that. A lot of what's going on, I, I had no clue when I wrote this down, but this question I have is this. Have you ever gotten word from someone that you loved that they were sick and you needed just to be with them? I'm asking that question. I, have, I just think this, this past May, I got word that my dad was sick. He was in the hospital with a pretty severe blockage in his heart, multiple blockages. First thing I did... <laughs> One, I called to talk to him because I guess it comes, I get it from him, but he was stubborn and he wouldn't go to the hospital. I said, Dad, you're getting to the hospital or I'm coming and I'm putting you in a car and I'm taking you to the hospital. You choose. <laughs> They're going to be nicer, I promise. <laughs> but that was just, like I was on a plane. I, I'm going home. I don't, this is serious. I went and I saw my dad. And, 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 and many of you, if not everyone in this room, could echo the same thing. We've all had that time where, where we, we get word from somebody that we love, that we care deeply about, we might not see them ever again on this earth. I just I think of Bo right now. He's driving to Tri-Cities. He texts me. He said he's going to try to get to Cleellum to get to church there in Cleellum and then try to make it to Tri-Cities this evening. Pray for him. He's got a lot going on. He's just pray for him right now. I know he covets those prayers, but I'm just thinking about him. He's going over there to, to see his grandma. He's going over to see his grandfather, and he's just he's not saved. And that's that that weighs heavy on his heart right now. I'm sure. But he's going over there to see them, somebody that that he may never see again. I think of Mark and Nelly right now. What Mark's going through, can't imagine it. Can't imagine. 
I can imagine him getting ready to tell his wife goodbye. <clears throat> Jesus got the same word. But the goodness, what I love about this, is what you see in verse number three, or verse number four. When Jesus heard, when Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness isn't unto death. <laughs> Jesus wasn't worried about it. Number one, he wasn't surprised to hear the word. He wasn't surprised to get this message from, from Mary or Martha, the, the, the messengers that they had sent out to him. We're going to get a little bit of background in that in just a moment. But he wasn't, he wasn't concerned he wasn't worried that, they, that he wasn't going to see Lazarus again. This is the, the, the God that we serve. He, nothing surprises him. We'll hit that again in a little bit. Let's get a little bit of backstory. Let's see kind of what's going on. Jesus is, if you go back in chapter number 10, you're going to see that Jesus is in Jerusalem preaching to, uh, to, to the people there in Jerusalem, and they... They start, they get, they get ready to kill him because of, they, they say, well, this blasphemy because you're saying that you are God. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. He didn't believe that he and the father are one. You find that in verse number 30 of chapter number 10. He says, I and my father are one. And they pick up stones again to try to kill him. Blasphemy is what they say. So Jesus is just in this area. Bethany is just not too far. It's, it's roughly a mile and three quarter or so, maybe two at the most. You find that in verse number 18 of chapter 11. It says, uh, it says Now Bethany was nigh into Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. So there, he, he's, he's about there. It's, it's close to two miles away from Jerusalem. So Jesus is, just, leave, just leaves Jerusalem in chapter number 10, verse number 40. It says, And he went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. He went to, to the place where it's, it's uh, roughly, I, I don't know this for sure, but it was roughly around 20 to 25 miles away from Jerusalem, where Jesus had gone to after the, people tried, after the Jews tried to kill him. He escaped away. So he gets away. He's, he's, he's about 20 or so miles away from Bethany, where Lazarus excuse me, Lazarus is at, and, and, and he's sitting there, and he's, he's not really in a hurry to leave. And I think there's a good reason why, because verse number 41 of chapter 10 says, And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. So there's a lot of people in that area of where Jesus was baptized, uh, in Jordan, and uh, is. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I, I had the name written down somewhere, and it didn't get put onto my iPad, so it's, it's gone. But it, it's in there. You can find it if you search out enough. You can find the name of where Jesus was baptized. It's, I promise it's in there. It's just not going to come out because it's gone. <clears throat> Sorry. It's a lot going on in here right now, so you're lucky to get some form of sentences. <clears throat> Just saying. Anyway, so Jesus is over. He's in this other uh, town about 20 or so, 25 miles away. And these people are receptive to him. They're saying, well, John the Baptist, he preached to you. He didn't do any miracles, but everything he said about you was true. And they believed him. So Jesus is sitting there and, 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 and having these people talking with him and they believing on him. And then he gets this word from Mary and Martha, that Lazarus is sick. They send messengers to, to Jesus, and you find what Jesus says, verse number four, he says, I hear you, but it's fine. Lazarus is going to be okay. He's not going to die. or it, it, it's, it's not unto death. I find that interesting, because to the the eyes of everybody around him, it was death. But to Jesus, he was sleeping. 
he was sleeping. He says that, and so he, he tells these, uh, these messengers, and no doubt they, they, they go back, because you see Jesus in verse number 5 says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Verse 6, When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He wasn't really in a hurry to head over there. He's like, I'm going to hang out here for a couple more days, and then we'll head that direction. Now, I don't know about you, but 20, 25 miles is, and that's not something you're just going to do in a day. I mean, some people might be able to. Maybe they can do it in a day. I'm probably not walking 20, 25 miles unless I had to. Just saying, maybe I'll have to one day. Uh, might. Right, Jared? We're gonna, we're gonna pro- I'm actually going to regret those words I just said because I might be going hunting with Jared here soon and he's going to work me, I think. And that's, <laughs> take it easy, man, okay? Just, yeah, greenhorn here. But, but he, they're, they're, they're about 20, 25 miles away and they're, they need to go back over there. But Jesus says, no, hang on a second. It's not time to go yet. It's not time to go over there. He wasn't surprised about the news. It wasn't a shock to him. And so he goes, you see him talk, to his, talk with his disciples, and, and we're actually going to um, go over this next section on Wednesday, so come back. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to talk about what his disciples, um, how they react to this decision that Jesus has. And, um, and we'll, we'll talk about, about that on, on Wednesday. But let's go ahead and read it. Verse number 7 says, Then after that, sorry, then after that, say, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. And his disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? They're a little confused at this. Jesus answered, answered and Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of, the, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of the sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, makes sense. Again, their, their, their mind is not where Jesus is at. It's a totally, again, I'm not going to, we're not talking about this tonight. We're talking about it this morning. We're talking about it on Wednesday. So just, let's just get through it. Focus. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of, take, of taking a rest, of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, I love this, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> he, okay, I'm going to stop. Wednesday. Focus, Wednesday. i got to get through this morning. This is this Wednesday, okay? <clears throat> then, and I am glad for your sakes, verse 15, that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us go also, that we may die with him. Wednesday. Come back Wednesday. It's going to be good. It's going to be great. <clears throat> Then when Jesus came, he found that he had, laid, had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then Martha said, un, uh, then Martha said, sorry, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Martha knew. You've got to you've got to think that the the messengers that Martha and Mary had sent to tell Jesus, roughly twenty twenty five miles away, they had they had to have made it back in time. And they would have given them the message that Jesus had said. Is that a, a pretty plain? They're not just going to go, oh, well, Jesus, I'm just going to stick around here for Jesus for two more days. No, they're, 
they came to tell Jesus a, a message, and they were fully intended on Jesus to do what? Drop everything he's got and go back. That's what they were anticipating. Because what did Martha just say? If you were only here, he wouldn't have died. The messengers were going there to bring Jesus back, not to go there and just have Jesus say, oh, he's going to be fine. I'm going to stay here for a couple more days. That was not in their intentions. That was not their plan. That, just yesterday, we're, we're, yesterday we're going, we had a plan. Picked up my mom about 9 o'clock, 9.30 or so. We left early. We're going to hit a couple stores on the way down to SeaTac. So in my brain, I've got the whole thing planned out from the time we leave the house at a specific time, 4.30, to the time we get to pick up my mom at 9.30. I've got everything planned out. I know where I'm going, know what I'm doing. Whitney had another plan. <laughs> she soon realized that my plan was better, and we, we went with that. <laughs> quite down, fish. Quite down. <laughs> But we had the, we weren't quite communicating very well, right? Jesus had another plan because ultimately his plan was to get the glory for this whole situation. But Jesus had, the, had another plan. Their plan was to bring Jesus back with them. So they, they would, I, I can't help but wonder, I, I, it's not there, I don't know for sure, but in my mind I'm thinking you, they're going to tell them they tell Jesus what happened, and they're going to go back and give another message to, to Martha. Jesus said he's going to be fine. <laughs> Jesus says it's not unto death. He's not going to die. And then he dies. And lays in a grave for four days. And Jesus shows up. Can you imagine the, the amount of emotions that's going through Martha's head? that's going through her body, that if she would have gotten the message from Jesus saying, he's going to be fine, it's not going to be unto death. And she gets the message and then he dies. Can you imagine what those emotions would be like? I mean... If I promise my children ice cream and I don't give it to them, it's like the world is ending. I mean, come on. Like, it's Whitney, too, but, you know, that's normal. We all know this, okay? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Squirrel. Focus. Jesus said that it wasn't going to be unto death, but he dies anyway. And Martha comes, now you see Martha saying in verse number 21, said, Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. She was expecting Jesus to just heal him. She was expecting a... Come on, hey... Martha had it all worked out in her head of how this was going to go. She had the whole thing planned out. I know Jesus can heal him. I know as long as he just has to say the word and he'll be healed. All he has to do, all I've got to do is believe that he's going to take care of him. And I know he will. I'm for sure. I'm, 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 I'm settled that God can take care of him. He can heal him. I know there's nothing that he can't do. She had it all worked out in her head. Martha was the planner, wasn't she? Martha was the planner. <laughs> she was the one that, she, she had everything lined out. She was the workhorse. She was always going to be there doing anything and everything that needed to be done. She had everything figured out. But God had another plan. And she didn't understand it. And she said, well, if you would have just been here, if you would have just came when I sent the messengers, Lazarus wouldn't have died. She had it all worked out.
Verse 22 says, But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. That's Martha saying, God, if you would have been here, I know he wouldn't have died. But I know still, whatever you ask of God, the Father, he's going to give it to you. And Jesus says this, verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. That's reassurance. But look what Martha says. It's like she believes him and then she doesn't. And she believes him and then she doesn't. She's kind of back and forth. She's like, well, Martha saith unto him, I know that, that he shall rise again in the, in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He asked her a question. He's like, no, no, no. You don't, I don't think you understand. I am life. Jesus says, I am life. You believe in me, you'll, you'll never die. This earth is just a place that we get to pass through. Our eyes will close in death here one day. If the Lord tarries, then we're all going to die at one point. But just because we die here, physically, this flesh, this old thing, doesn't mean we die there. To be absent of the body here to mean to be present with the Lord. Mary, Martha says, verse 27, She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said this, she went her way. She said that to Jesus, and then she just walked away. Conversation ended. I find it interesting what Martha does next. And when she had said this, sorry, and when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. No, he doesn't. Did I miss something in there? I don't ever remember Jesus saying, Go get Mary. Why did Martha do that? Why did Martha go and tell Mary, Jesus wants to see you? I don't necessarily have an answer for that, to be honest with you. It's, I'm somewhat puzzled by it. The first thing that comes to my mind is that she's frustrated. <laughs> Jesus wants to talk to you. Maybe you can talk some sense into him. I don't know. It seems like she's just frustrated because things didn't quite plan out like she had wanted them to. She knows that whatever God Jesus asks to God is going to give it to him. She believes all of this, but yet she's just... Ugh. Don't we get that way at times? Whenever, we just, whenever things just don't go the way we think they need to, even though we know what God says... Even though we know that he's in control, don't we just get frustrated with the people that we love? Somebody talks some sense into us and we just don't like what we hear, so we just stomp off. You've never done that before, have you? No, no, of course not. She's over here laughing like... <laughs> but isn't that, isn't that what we do? I don't like what you I don't like how you said that to me. But it's true. She goes and tells Mary. And Mary jumps up and goes and sees Jesus. Do you see that in verse number 29? As soon as she had heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town but was in that place where Martha met him. 
The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, uh, that she rose up hastily, he and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come to uh, come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Mary was the same, was the same as Martha. Now, I, I want to be careful, because Mary and Martha had both just lost a brother. I've not lost a brother. I don't know what I would do. They were grieving, rightfully so. They were grieving. And they were going through something that was very difficult. And their first thing to do was to blame Jesus. They blamed Jesus for Lazarus dying. Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. Lord, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. They were blaming Jesus for, what, for the fact that their brother was dead. It wasn't Jesus' fault. Jesus had said it's not unto death. He gave them his word. They, he gave them a promise. It's not unto death, but that the, the, the Father can be glorified. But yet they blame him for it. Verse number 33, when Jesus Therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled. So well, why, why, was, why would Jesus groan in the spirit? Was he so emotionally taken back by how Martha was reacting? Was he, you, you see verse number 34, and said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse number 35, Jesus wept. We're going to see in just a moment. Actually, turn with me quickly over to, over to Hebrews. Turn with me over Hebrews chapter number 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 15 says this, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of, his, of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto him, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You know, that verse is tied directly to this. Jesus wept. It, 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 it's, it, it, there's some controversy here. Some would say that Jesus wept. Because of, because of his emotions and his feelings that he had for Lazarus, and I think that would be partially true. But I can't help but see the, word, the, the verse uh, prior to that, verse number 33, that, his spirit, that he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Why was he groaning? Why was his spirit troubled? Why was he groaning in himself? He was, it was simply because of the fact that they didn't believe him. It was a simple fact that Jesus had said he's not going to die. But yet you're sitting here like, like he's gone forever. I told you that he's not going to die. I told you that, he's gonna, that, that the sickness is not unto death. But yet you sit here and you weep and you blame me for the fact that he is sleeping in a, t in a tomb or in a grave. You're blaming me for all of this. He's, it, it's... It's like they didn't believe him, but they did. It's kind of a double standard, if you will. They believe him when everything goes the way that they think it should, but then whenever it doesn't go the way they should, they blame him for it. Jesus isn't the one to blame here, people. 
Jesus wept. Then said he, then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? <laughs> Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. He heard them say that, and he again was like, Ugh. It hurt him at the fact that they didn't believe that he was able to take care of it. He groaned in himself because of their unbelief. You say, well, why, why did Lazarus die to begin with? You find that answer in verse number four. It's very plain. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Lazarus was in the grave for four days so that Jesus Christ could be glorified. So that the Father could, be, could, could get the glory for the life that Lazarus was living. It wasn't because, of, because Jesus was trying to teach them a lesson. It was so that God could get the glory with his life. And the way that Mary and Martha was acting, the way that they were responding to this, to this tragedy in their minds, caused Jesus to groan in his spirit. The ones, the ones that Jesus loved most, you get that? Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Loved them dearly. You find it in multiple accounts where Jesus is at their house. Not very often does Jesus go to somebody's house multiple times. Jesus loved them, and that's very obvious. It's plain. But yet they don't believe that he can do anything. Yet they, they're reacting in such a way that they're blaming Jesus for it. If you would have only been here, if you would have been here, he wouldn't be dead. They're blaming him. Have you ever had that happen before? Somebody that you truly care about blame you for something that you had no control over? Blame you for something that, that you didn't even do? You see, Jesus doesn't rebuke them in any way. You see that? Nowhere in there does Jesus say, shame on you. Shame on you. But he just asks them, where is he? <laughs> where is he? And he goes... It says, verse 30, 39, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Sitting in this cave, and there's a stone in the way. Martha, once again, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. She still doesn't think, she doesn't believe that Jesus is about to do what he's about to do. She's like, Lord, you don't want to do that. He surely stinks. He's going to stink by now. He's been dead for four days. I stink after four days being in the mountains. Can't imagine. But Jesus is like, will you roll the stone away? Will you just stop it? It's not what he says. That's, that's my version. <laughs> <laughs> verse number 41 says oh the, the verse 40 Jesus saith unto her said not I unto thee that it that it that if thou wouldst believe thou shalt see the glory of God he tells her Martha didn't I tell you believe in me and you're going to witness something marvelous you're going to witness the glory of God. 
just simply believe. Verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou, that thou hearest me always, but, I be, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he was dead, and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot and with grave clothes, and his face was bound, was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some... But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Did you see that? I find this astonishing. Then many. Shouldn't that say all? Shouldn't that say all? It says many. Can you imagine? Dead man, four days, stinks. Lazarus, come forth. And he gets up and walks out. And many believe. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Am I not the only one that sees that word many and wonder why? You just witnessed a miracle. A man that's dead for four days stinks, is obviously dead. He's wrapped in grave clothes. He's got a napkin on his face. And he comes walking out like this. And many believed. Am I the only one that just finds that odd? Come on, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. That word should be all. All should have believed that had witnessed that. And then when some went left and told others, they should be like, what? I need to come figure that out. I need to see what just happened. That's crazy. Jesus did that? No, it says many believed, and then some went and told on him. Tattletales. <laughs> Jesus just raised a man from the dead after four days being in the grave. And some go and tell the Pharisees about what Jesus just did. Just did. Look in verse number 47. Then gathered the priest cheat the, the bleh, so told you. Formulating sentences is difficult sometimes. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Huh. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. They could care less about Jesus. They could care less about the man that he just raised from the dead. They could care less about the miracles that he did. They could care less the fact that he was the Christ, the Savior, the Messiah that they had been promised. They were more worried about their pocketbooks. They were more worried about their station. They were more worried about their position than what God had just done. God forbid that his people, the Jews, sorry, we're not the Jews. God forbid that we get to that point. When God does a miracle in our lives, we should say, oh, well, there's no way that I'm going to be able to make more money now. Well, there's no way that my, that my title or my, my uh, 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 career is going to be able to be, to be uh, uh, furthered now. I'm going to go, have to go into the ministry. Or 
Well, there's no money in the ministry. That's basically what they just said. That's like us saying, God, I, I, there's no way I can go to the ministry. I'm making six figures right now. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills that the cattle are on. And he thinks that you think six figures is going to is going to do anything to him. Come on, just, just, that's just a number. Seven figures, eight figures. How, how, how much money do you want? He's got more. He's got more than you can ever make. What they're just saying is saying my money is more important than people reaching people being reached for Jesus Christ. Did you see what they said there? <laughs> it, it, it. Uh, verse 48. If we let him alone, all men will believe on him. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Leave him alone. You say, you've been babbling for a while now. What does this have to do with me? What does this have to do with me? See, when God was told Lazarus is sick, he wasn't surprised by it. I've said that. The purpose of this is simple. That we recognize that there's nothing that surprises God. There's nothing that makes him fall off his throne. Nothing. But what we have to remember is this. He's going to get the glory for our lives. One way or the other. The question is, how much more glory is he going to get from our lives when we recognize who he is and not say, no, 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 God, I can't give you that. I can't... No. <laughs> if I do that, more people might believe on you. <laughs> if I live for you, if I... <clears throat> he died for you. Doesn't he deserve your life? See, they were so worried about their pocketbooks that they lost sight of the reason why Jesus was here to begin with. And that was to seek and to save that which was lost. They were more lost than any of them. And they weren't willing to see Jesus for who he was because, they were, because he would affect their livelihood. When in reality... God can bless them more than they could have ever imagined. And the same goes for us here today. Our lives are nothing without Him. Nothing. It, our life is but a vapor. Those who sit at death's door right now, they're going to go see Jesus, if they've accepted him into their heart. See, because that's, that's the thing right there, is, is you can say whatever you want in this life, but if you don't believe that he is the Son of God, and that he did die on that cross, and that he did shed his blood for your sin and for my sins, and that he did three days later raise from the grave. God raised him from the dead. If you don't believe that, you can talk the talk. You can sit in here every single Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Saturday men's breakfast, every Wednesday. You can come in here and you can talk the talk. But can you walk it? Does Jesus in your heart 
That's what makes the difference. It's not showing up at a church. I'm glad you're here. But what makes the difference is saying, Jesus, I need you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. Because there is no way that I could do this without you. There's a lot more that can be said. Jesus had known that what was going to happen to all, all along. But what he wanted them to see is that God hears his cry whenever he cried to him. and he, That God is the one that sent him. You know, how can we apply this to us today? How can we take this and we can make application to our lives today? Simple. This is by allowing ourselves to be fully given to God. Even though we have so much going on in our lives, even though we don't understand what's happening, what God is actually doing in our lives, we don't get it. We might have everything figured out. God, if you just did this, 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 and this, I would be a successful person and I'd be able to reach more people for you. We've got things figured out. We are, we are, not, we, we are not a dumb people. <laughs> we are an intelligent people. Sometimes to our failure. But we, we have things planned, Right? We have a plan today. After the service, we're going to have our skip practice. And then after that, we're going to go uh, get ready. Probably maybe some eat, go eat some lunch. And then we're going to go up and go be at the nursing home about 2 o'clock. And we're going to be there. And then we're going to come back here tonight at 6. And we're going to have another service tonight. And then we're going to go home. And tomorrow, we're going to go to our jobs. That's the plan, right? What happens if something changes in that plan? Does everything stop? Does God just fall off of his throne because, oh no, you were in a car accident. That throws a wrench in the plan. Our plan. Does it not? Oh no, there's... Someone's hurt. You you fill in the blank. Something that can go outside of our plan that doesn't make things doesn't make things move smoothly like we think they should do we allow that to say god what's going on if you would have just been here he wouldn't have died do we let that affect our lives the change in plan whoa whoa your plan it might be a change in your plan but it's not a change in his plan he knows what's about to happen It's no surprise to him. I've said that before, haven't I? It's no surprise to him of what happens in our lives. The question is, how are you going to react to it? Those circumstances that come into our lives that are not in our plan, how do you react to it? Do you blame God for it? If you just would have fit my plan, my schedule, none of this would have happened. Huh. Well, maybe if he would have stayed in your plan, he wouldn't be getting the glory for your life. Because if it would have stayed in the plan that Martha had thought, had it all planned out, Jesus, all you got to do is say the word and, and Lazarus will be healed. Jesus wouldn't have gotten the glory like he did here. You know, I I, I said all should have believed on Jesus. I'm grateful for the many. I'm not ungrateful for the many that, that did believe on him there. I find it odd that all didn't. But then again, we are people. I'd say the word that I'm thinking, but my wife is telling me not to. We have this thing. Yeah, she's watching me. We are all the word that I'm not, think- not going to say, okay? We all have those moments. 
of when we let our own pride get in the way of what he's doing in our lives. See, his plan never changes. But when our plans change, we blame him for it. So, well, how do I fix that? Well, that's a hard thing. You know what you got to do? Do you know how you got to fix that? Or you know how you overcome that? Ready? This is hard. Let go. You have to let go. You get, it's not your life anyway. You have to let him lead you. You mean you just walk around like this all day? No, 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 no. You need to have a relationship in such a way that where he tells you to go, you're able to go because you're listening to him and you're communicating with him and you're talking with him and you have such a relationship that when he says, hey, I need you to go in the ministry or hey, I need you to go over here and talk to your neighbor or hey, I need you to go over here and do this or hey, I need you to give this extra in the tithe. Allison Miller is going to be here next week. We need to be a blessing to her. Just saying, that's free. We need to be a blessing to her in any way we can. She is a single lady ministering in Mexico. She loves the Lord, and she loves those boys that she's a mother to, really. We need to be a blessing to her. Somehow. We need to be a blessing to her. That's, that's free. That's just kind of just there. But God might just say, hey, I want you to do this next Sunday morning when Allison's here. You say, well, God, if I do that, then I won't be able to do this or this. I've got all these plans. I've got a remodel I've got to finish. Or I'm trying to do this. I'd really like to get a new car. But God, no, no, no. God says, hey, I want you to do this. But God, that changes my plans. Yeah. Then you're not on my plan. God knows. He's just testing us. Are you going to be faithful to me? Are you walking with me in such a way that no matter what happens, you believe that you trust me? Are you, do you have a relationship with me that when I throw these wrenches in, your, in the works, that it doesn't throw you off the rails? You don't go off the deep end simply because your plans changed? That's hard to do. Come on. I know this is a little bit tough this morning. I know there's some stuff going on. God knows exactly what he's doing. God orchestrates everything. He knows. The question is, are we going to be a people? Are we going to be a many or are we going to be all? Are we going to be one of the many? Or one of the some? Are we going to be the many that believe on him? Or the some that just run and tell others, like, can you believe what he's doing over here? What are you going to do? Are you going to believe that when something changes or when... Life doesn't go the way you plan it to go. That you're like, God, if you just would have. Are you going to blame him for it? Or are you going to say, God, I don't understand this. But I know you got a plan for something. And I don't see it. I don't know it. This is really hard for me right now. I'm going through a tough time right now in this, in this section of my life. I don't understand this and I don't like it. But I know you're in control. I know you're going to get me through this. Do you see what that Hebrews? Go back to Hebrews chapter number four and we'll be done. Hebrews chapter number four. Read that verse number 15 again. Follow, follow along. Verse four, chapter four, verse 15. 
For we, not, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of, inf- of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find, the, find grace to help in time of need. See, God will give us what we need, but we just have to go to Him. We have to have a relationship with Him, and not just in the time that we, are, that we need Him. I can argue that we need Him all the time. But when it's really hard, is that the only time that you go to Him? He says, my grace is sufficient for you. We just have to go to His throne and get it. He has mercy that's everlasting. We just have to go to his throne and get it. Are you going to be a many? Are you going to be a some? title of this message this morning is is a couple. And I'm not too sold on it, but the simple one is God gets the glory. It's a simple one. My mom said something to me last night, though. And I told her I'm going to steal it from her. If you're breathing, there's a reason. Let that sink in a little bit. If you're breathing, there's a reason. That's from Indiana. Okay. <laughs> she flew all this way just to give me that. <laughs> no, she flew all this way for her grandbabies. That's what she flew here for. Let's just be honest. The three that are hanging on her right now. If you're breathing, there's a reason. God has a reason and a purpose for our lives on this earth. Otherwise, who wouldn't be here? If you've got air in your lungs, God has a reason for you to be here. Are you going to let him use you for that reason? Are you going to say, well, God, it doesn't fit my narrative, or God, it doesn't fit the way I think it should go, so therefore I'm just going to not do anything. If that's your heart, this altar is open for you this morning, because that's wrong. If, you don't let, if you're not going to let God use you for how he sees fit, then why are you breathing? God has a reason for you to be here. Let's live for him. And let's let him use us and oh, watch his mighty works of what he does for, with our lives. He has a reason for us to be here. Are you going to be a many or a some? Let's, let's stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I thank you for your word.